Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Kerner, County Mayor of Palm Beach County. I appreciate the press being here today and paying attention to this important press conference, which I'd like to call to order. Uh, we have a, a lineup today of speakers uh, that all have some very important things to say to our community. I'm going to start with some brief opening, opening comments. I'd like to then recognize the elected officials in attendance here today to include we have Commissioner Greg Weiss, Commissioner McKinley, Commissioner Balachet, Commissioner Bernard, and also Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. I'm also joined here today by Dr. Lena Alonzo, who you all know very well at this point. She's the Department of Health uh, doctor in charge of Palm Beach County and the lead agency in response. I'd like to start with a little bit of a broad overview of where we came from and where we've arrived at today. Uh, we've all shared and lived this experience together in this county, in the state, in this nation. Uh, as we're all very well aware that the main uh, way for us to combat the spread of this pandemic is by socially distancing ourselves. And we've been told that if we do that effectively, it will have the effect of two things, reducing the spread of COVID-19 and then also flattening the curve so that as a government, our prime responsibility is to mitigate the unnecessary loss of life in this county. And by doing that, the way we accomplish that is by ensuring that we remain below the surge capacity of our ICU, our ventilator count, and our hospital beds in general. You're gonna hear some uh, data from Dr. Alonzo today that substantiates that our efforts have been very effective. And for that, to Palm Beach County, I want to say how grateful I am, not just as the county mayor, but as your neighbor, as your friend, and as a native of this county. We also have heard a lot about testing. We've heard from Governor DeSantis about the broad testing strategy that we're going to have moving forward as we all realize and recognize that we're at a transition point in this pandemic. So for the last 45 days, we have reacted, we have obtained the necessary resources we needed to protect our county. We've instituted a broad range of testing, both walk-up, drive-through, private, public, National Guard, healthcare district, Commissioner Mac Bernard, who's assisted in leading that effort, is going to speak to some of those items today. We're also going to introduce a framework as we transition from response to the pandemic itself to responding to the needs economically and financially of our community. That means we're going to begin to focus extensively, not just on the economy. We're well aware that the governor has convened a task force. He's appointed an executive committee and subgroups that are working diligently over the past five days to provide that framework to open up the state of Florida and the economy. Now that picture, and I'm honored to serve on that executive committee at the governor's appointment, that picture in South Florida may look different than the rest of the state of Florida when the governor decides to pull that trigger and open up the economy. That is a decision that is going to rest with the governor. We will provide a framework through that, that task force, but the governor will decide based upon the health, safety, and welfare of our community when that trigger will be pulled and when the economy will open up. But when it does, South Florida will probably look a little bit different than the rest of the state, mostly because we have 60% of the cases within the three county region, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. And we have some unique factors demographically and travel-wise that affect our region of the state a little bit differently. At the same time, the counties are empowered and encouraged to release a recreation plan. And that is what I'll be discussing today towards the end of this. What that means is that uh, at 12.01 a.m. on Wednesday this week, the county will have an order executed opening up different facets of our recreational opportunities here in Palm Beach County. With that carrot comes a stick. Okay, so I don't want you to look at this opportunity as uh, the analogy I use is that at the last class of school before summer break, when that bell goes off and everybody runs out of the schoolhouse and it's summer break, that's not what we're in today. That's not what's gonna happen on Wednesday. What's gonna happen on Wednesday is certain segments of our recreational economy will open to Palm Beach County residents. And we're going to do it in a very uh, strategic, uh, a very rule-based and regulatory-based way that ensures the safety of not just those recreating, but the men and women that work in those industries, for example, golf or marinas, or even our county, county public parks and the county workers that work there. We are, have a regulatory structure in place that we're gonna to release today that ensures the safety and well-being of everybody involved in recreating. 
and there will be stiff penalties if there's non-compliance, up to and including arrest and incarceration. It is a second degree misdemeanor. Of course, the sheriff will tell you during this press conference that he's capable, ready, willing, and able to enforce the law, and he will. I have no doubts that his deputies will. But there's going to be an educational component to this transition as well. And so what I would ask is that as these rules are released here today, and the parameters of recreation in Palm Beach County in the near future are disclosed to you, that you take it upon yourself as a civic duty to reinforce these rules and regulations and abiding by them as we move forward. A little bit of social pressure never hurt anybody, and if you're out there golfing and people aren't um, complying with the rules that are put in place, both by the governor and by the county, then there's going to be a regression back to less recreation, and I don't want to see that happen in this county. That's happened in other states. There's a governor, I think, in um, Nevada who opened up golf, and there was widespread um, lack of following the rules and the law, and the governor shut that industry back down. That doesn't just affect the golfers or the boaters and everyone else that's there to recreate. It hurts the financial standing of those employees that work in this industry. So as we release these rules, it's not just for the health, safety, and welfare of you and those in our community. It's the economic health, safety, and welfare of those that work in that industry. So I, I expect and anticipate strict compliance with that, and I know Palm Beach County will continue to lead in that regard. Before I discuss the specific facets of recreation that will open, I'll do that towards uh, the latter part of this co uh, press conference. Um, before then, I'd like to now call up Dr. Alina Alonzo to talk about how this decision was made and what data and what medicine and science lies behind it to ensure the public's health, safety, and welfare. Dr. Alonzo? Thank you very much. First, I want to say that I'm very proud of the decision that we're making here today, the strategy and the degree that we're doing, what we're doing in order to stop the spread of COVID-19. We're basing this on science. We're basing this on our local Palm Beach County data. I have some of the charts up there for you to take a look at. And to date, um, this is what we've collected here in Palm Beach County. One of the things that everybody has heard has been talking about the having to have 14 days of decreased number of cases in order to make your decision to go into the next phase. And the reason that that's in the early phase of the epidemic, that's very hard to do, is because each day as we increase our testing, we will have more numbers coming back. And so what you end up seeing are peaks in the number of cases. But if instead of looking at the number of cases, you look at the rate of positivity, which has been suggested by the CDC, and Dr. Burks has talked about it in numerous um, public comments that have been, been made at the national level, you take a look at this graph over here, that's the one on your right, the top right, and those peaks and valleys are the number of testing that has been done, the number of new cases coming in to Palm Beach County. When you do a graph and you t take a trend of that, you see that we reached a peak and now we're on our way down. So the positivity rate since April 6 in Palm Beach County, the, the, the positivity rate for COVID-19 cases has decreased from 17.8% to today at 11.1%. We're also looking at other stats, such as the first graph that shows the number of deaths. And you see way in the beginning from, from the uh, first dates, we had kind of like normal from our very first case. And then you see it gradually going up to that big peak up above, and then you see it coming back down. So again, you're seeing a very similar curve, a curve that looks, has a, a certain slope to it, very similar in all the graphs. But again, on the way down, but you still see those spikes. 
The third, um, the one in the middle to your left, is the cases, the actual cases per day. And again, you see a curve with it on the way down. Now you look at the one on the right to that, shows the hospitalizations, COVID-19 hospitalizations. You see a big peak in the middle, and then those cases coming down. Well, you're still seeing some high peaks, right? But when you take that trend, that gives you that nice smooth graph. And then you take a look at the emergency room admissions, which is the bottom left graph, and you see before the normal line that goes up and down, that's before our event started, and you see it peak and then start coming down. And if you see that coming down, that last line on the bottom is almost at the same level as before the event. The last graph on the right bottom is the number of emergency room cases with cough, fever, and shortness of breath. And you see that the red, blue, and green lines coincide with a peak, and again, coming down to normal, almost to normal, or beyond normal, actually, with the, the blue ones, which is the cough. So if you look at that, to me, when I see that, I see a pattern where there was actually a peak in, in the beginning of April. All those peaks coincide by one or two days. And then it's slowly coming down. So that's the decision that we've made now to be able to relax some of the activities that we feel are safe by maintaining social distancing. So you hear very clear, I hope, from everybody speaking today that this does not mean we're back to normal in any shape, way, or form. As a matter of fact, I would say that social distancing now is more important than ever. Why? Because we do not want those numbers to go back up. And I love the way that Mayor Kerner mentioned, it's not the last day out of school, guys. We're not going off to the beach and partying. Okay? So this is very, very important. That now more than ever, we need to be wearing our facial covers, just as everybody in front of me is doing. We need to maintain our six foot distancing from one another. You have to assume that everybody you're next to is positive. I have talked about this at the condos, um, the condominiums and the building um, complexes that have a lot of people and have laundry rooms, elevators. You have to assume that there's people out there who are asymptomatic who may have this and not even know it. And you need to stay six foot away from them. You need to wash your hands. You need to use sanitizers. Anytime you push an elevator button, anytime you open a door, you need to sanitize your hands. Okay? And we're gonna continue testing, aggressive testing. We're going out to specific populations that may be homebound, unable to get out and get tested. Um, and hopefully we will be getting the antibody testing, quicker test turnaround times for different, um, different ways of testing, and eventually what will really put us back to normal will be the vaccine. And I hope that this vaccine comes sooner than later, because once we have the vaccine, then we can vaccinate people, then we get back to normal, but not until then. And until that time, we have to continue practicing social distancing. So with that, I will turn it over to Commissioner Mack. Good afternoon. I would like to thank uh, Mayor Kerner for his leadership during this unprecedented uh, pandemic. The Emergency Operations Center has been activated at a level two for 45 days, responding to COVID-19. Testing opportunities continue to expand within Palm Beach County, working with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis 
and the Florida Division of Emergency Management Director Jared Moskowitz. In addition to the drive through testing sites at 15 Ballpark in West Palm Beach, the South County Civic Center in Delray Beach, and the Lakeside Medical Center in Bell Glade, we are working with the Healthcare District to open two additional walk-up testing sites this week. We are excited to provide more testing opportunities to the residents of Palm Beach County. These walk-up sites will be located at the CL Brumback Clinic at 1150 45th Street in West Palm Beach and the CL Brumback Health Clinic at 411 West Indian Town Road in Jupiter. And in addition, earlier today we learned that we're going to add an additional walk-up testing site at Wells Recre Recreational Center in Revere Beach. We're working with our partners and we will announce a date, a start date, as soon as we can. In addition, staff is finalizing plans to begin reaching out to residents in our special needs database and homebound persons that require testing. We are planning to provide pop-up testing to, for our hard-to-reach communities as well. These services are anticipated to start by early next week. Thank you. Next, we'll bring back the mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Bernard, for the update on the testing. It's important that the community understand that even though we're transitioning right now from um, a, a status of not having recreational activities available as broadly as we would like, um, I wanted Commissioner Bernard and I wanted the community to understand just how diligently we continue to work as a government, both with Governor DeSantis and our local partners, to ensure that our, our structure and our infrastructure for testing and for medical care remains in place. That is job number one for the government, is to ensure the health, safety, and welfare. So even as we look towards the future, Palm Beach County leaders continue to ensure, uh, with DEM at the state level and again Governor DeSantis, that we have the proper testing capabilities. Because you will hear, if you haven't heard yet, that to continue to combat this pandemic, spot testing, surveillance testing, testing in communities that can become hot spots, uh, private testing, employer testing, all of those options need to ramp up even further for, for us to really start down a pathway to normalcy. And I think that in this initial phase of recreation, what we can all agree is that being contained within our homes has had its own adverse effects, although it's, it's increased the health and, and stop the spread, it is time for Palm Beach County to be able to access that recreation. But please, again, a reminder that this is not a transition fully away from our operational response to COVID-19. We will continue to be an emergency state here in Palm Beach County and statewide, and uh, we have a long, long way to go. So with that said, let me talk briefly about uh, some, of the, some of the recreational activities that we're going to open up here in Palm Beach County. The county administrator along with myself and in conjunction with the county mayors and administrators of Broward County and Miami-Dade County have worked in conjunction to ensure that this region of the state opens up rec recreation responsibly and in tandem with our neighboring communities uh, so that there is consistency within the law uh, when we look at it from a region perspective. So there's four general areas of recreation that will be opening up on Wednesday. And this is going to be contained in an order that will be published shortly Order number 2020-005. This order will be posted shortly on www.pbcgov.org. www.pbcgov.org. The reason why it's important for you as the consumer or as a resident to look at this order if you intend to partake in these activities is because there are strict requirements for this to go forward. And there will be strict enforcement, and we'll hear about that shortly. I would also like to, before I announce the four areas that we're gonna open, I'd like to tell the community and remind them that this wasn't something that we came up with on our own here at the EOC. We worked, uh, Ms. Baker worked very diligently over the past several weeks with our other counties to get a structure in place. And then she formed some working groups of community activists and volunteers for these industries to have the proper guidelines and restrictions in place. So this comes from the community and the leaders within the golf community, for example, or the boating community. Uh, these, these were not taken uh, or made in a vacuum. 
So again, if you refer to Order 2020-05, Section 5, the first activity and arena that we would like to open up on Wednesday is boating and marine activities. And I want to give you just a little bit of context about what the regulations and restrictions will look like. I'm not going to read them all. But for example, boating and recreational activities that do not comply with CDC guidelines um, and any activities that do not allow for proper social distancing. Very broad term, right? But we're going to expect CDC compliance. What that means is that, for example, flotillas, which include but are not limited to two or more boats traveling together or anchored within 50 feet. So let's break that down to its most basic level. If you're going to go out on your boat, you're not going to be permitted by law to hook up to another boat. You're not going to get to go to Peanut Island and, and have that big boat party that people like to do. That's not safe, and it's against the law, and enforcement will occur. Another example. All fish cleaning bait stations shall be limited to one person per station at a time. Again, embracing CDC social distancing. Jet ski rental operations shall be limited to single riders only. You can see a consistency here of adopting social distancing even though we're doing recreational activities. The second area of recreation that we intend to open, which is attachment three in the order, is golf. Now how can we golf effectively? Well, we've reached out to very, very prominent golfers and enthusiasts, uh, many people in the community that have assisted in saying or helping us understand how we can socially distance safely uh, while we're golfing. For example, restaurants may remain open at the golf course, but for takeout service only. Locker rooms shall not be available except for restroom use. Players shall not arrive more than 20 minutes prior to tea times. Play shall be set up for walking, single rider golf cart, or shared cart for families living in the same household. Course staff shall confirm household verification by ID. So yes, you're starting to see that these are some pretty uh, strict requirements, but they're there again for the public safety and welfare. The third area that we intend to open are public parks and natural spaces. For example, restrictions will include Police, park rangers, and designated staff shall patrol parks and monitor and ensure compliance with physical distancing guidelines. Park hours will be limited to sunrise to sunset unless further modified by appropriate authorities. Natural areas, trails, jogging, one way, unidirectional, are only open for walking, running, strolling, biking, and equestrian riding where otherwise allowed. Uh, picnic pav pavilions shall remain closed. Use of water fountains is prohibited. Basketball court shall be for individual practice only. Again, there are more restrictions contained with the order, and these industries themselves will be partly responsible for enforcing these measures upon the public, but the public has a duty to understand and, and abide by them as well. The last segment of recreation that we intend to open on Wednesday consists of tennis courts and community pools. Some, uh, again, short uh, reduced list, not the full list of restrictions, but single play is only permitted in tennis. No congregating on the quarter sidelines. Locker rooms and shower facilities shall remain closed. Rest, restrooms must be clean and disinfected, uh, disinfected regularly throughout the day. It is the responsibility of staff or management to ensure compliance with this order. Community pools. Pool capacity shall be limited to ensure social distancing in accordance with CDC guidelines. Pool deck seating or lounging shall be restricted to ensure social distancing in accordance with CDC guidelines. So you can really abide by or participate in all these recreational activities if you, if you just use common sense. Now some of the rules are a bit specific and again that comes from industry uh, that work in these recreational silos. But the images that we see on TV of people congregating, um, whether it's on a beach or in a park, those are the types of activities, negligent and unlawful activities, that will cause us to regress as a county, both in recreational opportunities and in stopping the spread of this pandemic. So I, I, I plead with the community to keep up the great work, and as we go into this recreational opportunity, that, that, that you amp up the CDC social distancing guidelines and compliance with these rules even further. And, and in doing that, we can return to some level of normalcy in our recreational and physical fitness lives. 
Um, we will be answering questions on some of these points a little bit later, but I'd like to now call Sheriff Rick Bradshaw to, to discuss um, his agency's perspective on enforcement. Sheriff? Thank you, Mayor. Hi, folks. As you've heard, um, all of the good work from the people of Palm Beach County that have gone by the rules voluntarily has paid off. So I think that when people are watching this tonight, they're going to be jumping up and down in their house and say, finally, finally, we get to go back out. And you're right, we do. But here's the thing that is the most important to remember. This can go away just as fast as they opened it up. And a few people out here can mess it up for everybody because we can't throw away the gains that we've already made. So that's why you're going to see very strict compliance with this. You know, if you're thinking that, you know, the sheriff doesn't have enough assets to be out there to watch us with the boats everywhere, don't make that mistake, folks, because we're going to make sure that it's done responsible. Please don't go out there and get think you're going to get these flotillas back out at Peanut Island because it's not going to happen because the first couple boats that get tied up, we're going to take you and then we're going to take your boat so you won't be able to tie them up anymore. All right? We want to make this last and the only way to do that is do the same thing that you've done to get here and make it easy on everybody. So if you go by the rules and this works for a few weeks, then everything else is going to start opening up. So we've got everything to gain and a lot to lose if we don't go by the rules. So we're going to make sure everybody does. So I want to revisit one other thing right now because we've got some inquiries from some people. There's some, quote, experts out here. I say experts. These are people that know a lot about nothing and a little bit about something that continually question why we're going to enforce the law. And yes, we're going to arrest people that commit minor crimes, and yes, they're going to go to the county jail. And no, it's not dangerous in there. Let me give you an example. We had a, a gentleman, I say a gentleman, he stole a bunch of toilet paper, paper towels, hand sanitizer, so we arrested and put him in the jail, minor crime. So under the guidelines that were established now, he was put on supervised uh, release. He was out a day, so he stole a car. There's the point, folks. Just because they're in there for a little minor crime doesn't mean they're not going to go commit big crimes. Look what happened in Hillsborough. They let a guy out for a little minor drug offense. In two days, he killed somebody. So I want to reemphasize the reason that we're going to enforce the law, and we're not going to give people a pass. We don't give people a pass when there's a hurricane. They don't get a chance to go steal your lawnmower. They don't get a go chance to go in there and steal the toilet paper and the paper towels that you need. The people expect us, the good people in this county expect us, law enforcement, to enforce the laws. The good people, they're going by the laws. They go to the store and buy what they need to buy. So why do the bad guys get an opportunity just to go do what they want to do because it's a minor crime? And obviously, being supervised, and I don't know by who, doesn't work. Otherwise, he wouldn't have stole a car. And whoever the people that say that it's so dangerous in the county jail and this is such a breeding ground for this virus, well, here's the facts, folks. Number one, not one single inmate in the county jail has been tested positive for this virus. Not one. And I knock all wood because I'm surprised. Out of 1,600 and something people that are in there, I'm surprised I didn't have at least 10 or more. But because we have excellent health care in there, because we take the guidelines, you know, every single in inmate's got a mask now. You know what? They made their own. They actually made their own in there, so now they all got two masks in there. All the deputies wear a mask. They wear gloves. Anybody that comes into the jail is screened by a very competent medical team. I would submit to you folks, the people that are in there right now probably got better medical care than most people out here on the street, and they get fed very sanitized meals. So it's not a breeding ground for anything. Because we have a low capacity, we're actually doing a lot of social distancing in there. We take everybody's temperature every single day. Not only the inmates, but the people coming into the jail, our employees, because we have that thermal imaging device that we use at both of our jails and at the courthouse. All right. So whoever these, quote, experts are, 
A, they don't understand what's going on here and haven't given the opportunity to even ask what's going on here, but they got the facts totally wrong. All right? So, again, don't, this is, here's some breaking news for you. Breaking news. If you think it's so dangerous in the jail, there's an easy way not to get there. Don't commit a crime. It's that simple because you're not going to get a pass. You're not going to go out here and steal the property of the good men and women that work hard here every day. And please, again, go by the rules that are set here for opening up what we're opening up here. We've got a lot to gain here. My phone, and I know everybody else that's standing behind me, has rung off the hook. Why can't I play golf? Why can't I put my boat in the water? Well, now you can. So let's not mess it up. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we're now going to call Virginia Baker, the County Administrator and Incident Commander, up for some comments. Ma'am? Good afternoon. After I speak up. Mayor Kerner, thank you uh, for your leadership. And to all of the Board of County Commissioners, thank you for your leadership and your support throughout this long, arduous process. Uh, this is an unprecedented um, case, as we all know, and we're working diligently at trying to protect our public and balance uh, personal liberties as well. I want to start out by saying um, we all have personal responsibility that we must continue to assist in flattening the curve. And that does include wearing our masks, and I want to thank the media because you are doing it. You are wearing your mask, and we want to thank you for that. I want to thank the people that I see getting off of our public buses for having their masks or face coverings on. Individuals I actually see jogging with their masks on or walking. And so as long as we continue with our personal responsibility to do the distancing, to also cover our face, um, when we are out in public places, and especially when we're in the grocery stores, drug stores, and anywhere that we can't accommodate distancing, we're wearing our facial covers. That has assisted us in flattening the curve and also working in the downward trend of spreading uh, this virus. I, we were able to work, as the mayor stated, with industry people on, in the various areas. Uh, PGA of America worked very well with us, along with uh, the, Honda, the leader of the Honda Classic and a number of the general managers with the golf course associations. Our municipal uh, golf partners also worked with the county on coming up with real, with regulations that can be implemented safely and keep the rest of us safe. We're going to hold people responsible for their actions. Uh, in addition, our boat ramps and docks and marinas, uh, other water bodies, we work very closely with the diving industry, with uh, the boating uh, industries, and a number of others. So please, please adhere to the rules that we have outlined. Your associations feel that these rules were fair, it protected you, allowed you to go out and enjoy it, but it also protects the public. One of the things that we did not uh, push forward with is beaches. We will continue to work with our beach group as well. We're gonna coordinate with our neighbors to the south and to the north of us when it comes to beaches. But the beaches are not open at this time. We know that we need, to, we will be working toward opening them, but we want to open them in a responsible manner so that we can continue uh, to work together uh, and protect the public. We are also looking at and have begun our discussions uh, regarding how do we bring our, our working groups back, our restaurants, our retail. So we will begin those work groups uh, in the near future. Right now we're working in tandem with the governor's office and their task force. They're going to give us the lead in this and then we will work with our work groups here locally because we're all a little different. And South Florida is different than any other places within the state. But we also will have our own unique differences as well. 
So we'll continue to uh, work in that regard. Uh, we're working with uh, Palm Beach County Food Bank and other food pantries that are part of our feeding infrastructure. Our goal is to supplement uh, their food supply by an additional 100,000 pounds of food per week through our existing infrastructure. And that infrastructure starts with the Palm Beach Food Bank and then pushes down into the neighborhood. So we have food pantries in the neighborhood. We work with churches on making sure that people within those neighborhoods are provided uh, food. We're all, additionally, we're in partnership with our local farmers. Uh, we're planning to distribute roughly about 3,600 uh, produce boxes per week for a four week period to supplement meals being distributed through the school district food program. This program will begin this week, it actually started uh, today. Also, we have expanded our DAW Senior Meals Program and are distributing approximately 800 hot meals per day in some of our community, countywide community revitalization uh, communities. Our Youth Services Department Summer Food Program also began today at multiple locations. At this time, we have also identified and signed uh, serve purchase rooms and signed service agreements with hotels to provide roughly about 250 units of COVID-19 non-congregate housing uh, for local eligible individuals that are required to self-isolate and they have no other means to isolate. So we want to make sure that if people want to comply and isolate and they have nowhere else to isolate, that we can accommodate them. We will make sure that our uh, homeless is also, if they are impacted, that we provide housing for them as well. And I think Commissioner Bernard covered the expanded testing that we're uh, putting in our community. I'd like to ask anyone that's listening, please get tested. It's important that we get tested. We want to make sure that if you are transportation challenged, that we provide a means for you to also be tested. If you are homebound, we're gonna ensure that you are tested. If you are in our database for um, our, our special needs shelter, we will be contacting you to ensure that you are able to be tested. So we want to make sure that we're continuing to respond to this virus, but we also want to make sure we start to plan for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baker, for that exhaustive update. Virginia Baker, as our county administrator, also serves, as you know, as the incident commander for the county. And I cannot say enough good things about her service and the service of her deputies that work under her operationally to include Mr. Bill Johnson um, and other members of her staff. As you can see that uh, despite the, this turn and um, change in direction that we're, we're taking as a county to carefully emerge ourselves and immerse ourselves back in some recreation, uh, this county and this county leadership remain highly, highly laser focused on keeping the resources we have in place up and running. We still have access to our mobile field hospital. We still have active ventilator counts and ICU bed counts. We have uh, broader testing going on, and we have really a community that has responded very effectively to this pandemic, and, and, and much credit goes to, to the community itself, and I have the utmost confidence and faith that that will continue in the future. I wanted to reiterate just three quick things as we bring this press conference to a close. Starting on Wednesday, four aspects of our recreational facilities in Palm Beach County will uh, be allowed to open be allowed to open. That doesn't mean that everything will open broadly and at once. I can tell you, for example, the county golf courses, we have four, they will not be ready to be open on Wednesday. You will be able to make a tee time, but it won't be for Wednesday. I'm sure some private clubs and perhaps some marinas will also not be able to open on Wednesday. But starting on Wednesday at 12.01 a.m., those aspects of recreation will be lawful. Second, beaches will not be open. Ms. Baker talked about this. Uh, it is the consensus regionally amongst the leaders, elected leaders, and professionals that uh, opening beaches at this time is not prudent. The third thing is you've heard um, some very meaningful data come from Dr. Alonzo about the rates. Right now, we've seen case decreases from 17.8% to today's rate of 11.1%. 
those are really, at the end of the day, the driving metrics that allow us to make these decisions as a government and allow us to open up these opportunities safely. So as long as those trends continue, and I know that they will because of our effective following of our guidance and rules, uh, that we will continue to have uh, broader opportunities in this county. And let me close on this comment. I deeply share the fear and concern economically about what our families and friends and neighbors and ourselves are going through with the prospect of diminished economy, job losses that are unprecedented. Um, we've seen the governor talk about issues with the unemployment. I'm very cognizant, uh, again, not as your county mayor alone, but as uh, your neighbor and your friend of the hardships that we will face in the, in the future economically. And I can tell you that serving on the executive committee of the governor's task force has taught me a lot quite frankly, because it's really made up of business executives and, and industry leaders that are businessmen and women and understand the economy much better than I do. But I do, know, I do know that we are on a pathway forward economically and that in the near future, the governor's task force will release its final recommendations. And from there, I know that the entire populace of the state will look to implement those economic uh, guidelines safely and efficiently and get our country, get our state, get our community back on course economically. That is not lost on me and those are one of the things that keep me up at night. With that said, I'm happy to take some questions. Al? Uh, so just to <clears throat> cover again these statistics you talked about, just the one that stuck out to me was you said at one time we, would, we had 17.8% of the people being tested in positive. Is that true? And now the more recent number is 11. That's correct, yes sir. Positivity rate. It has decreased from 17.8 to 11.1. That's daily, that's the daily. Uh, yes sir. And a follow-up question, for those people who do go out and decide to go out and they're going to try to break the rules a little bit or see how closely they're going to enforce this, do you have any advice for them to get out and do that? So the, the question is, what would I say to my neighbors and friends that will go out and uh, possibly you know, do a flotilla with their boat, or high five and ride around with someone you're not related to on a golf cart, or not follow the rules and regulations in the park system. What I would say to them is that, um, you know, if, if the public safety aspect of that didn't impress upon you enough the need to comply, the safety of your grandmother, the safety of your mother, the safety of your son or daughter and yourself, if that is not um, reason enough to abide by this, if the fact that it's the law and part of our civic duty is to follow the law, if that doesn't persuade you enough, understand that if you act out that way, those industries will be forced to shut down and you're going to be taking money out of somebody's pocket, out of their family's rent, out of their kids' ability to eat. Okay, Melissa, Commissioner McKinley works every day to make sure that the farmers in her district provide this county as much food as possible because people are suffering economically. So when you go out and you act out on the boat and you think it's funny and the sheriff's deputy comes and takes you to jail, remember that we have to come back to this EOC and make a decision about whether the boating remains open. And if it doesn't, well, the marina worker doesn't get paid. What's the charge? Is it a second degree misdemeanor? It's a second degree misdemeanor with a fine up to $5,000 and 60 days in jail. Those are the second degree misdemeanor terms. Um, it can also be enforced as a civil penalty and that will be at the discretion of the enforcement officer, and it's a crime. It's a violation of a county order. It's the power of the county, and we have these we have these abilities and powers in place at the governor's direction because government that's closest to the people governs best. And this is these are the decisions that your elected leaders have made. Yes, sir. How are the working groups developed? I, I will defer to to Miss Baker who handled the working groups so that. Um, I could attend to other issues and not create any sunshine issues. I can tell you that I personally, speaking for myself, I relied on a lot of people because this was really, you know, it takes a village to understand every asset, um, facet of golf. I mean, I don't play golf, but I can tell you that uh, Seth Waugh, the president and CEO of PGA, we speak daily. And, uh, and he's been incredibly helpful. Dr. Josh Smith, we all know Dr. Josh Smith. He's one of, he's like the king of golf. Um, and he, te you know, he tells me you can't have two people in a cart. We can do it with one. We don't even need to have carts. We can walk. So those things were very helpful. Former Commissioner Karen Marcus, huge proponent for opening golf back up, and worked with me daily. She really understood that industry and had a lot of contacts and was very helpful for me. Commissioner Valachay, I don't get to speak to him about these things, 
uh, because of the sunshine, but I know for a fact that he's been in Ms. Baker's ear advocating for rules and regulations, but getting it back open safely and efficiently. But those were just my personal experiences. Hannah. So the question is, are there concerns on, on my behalf or, or the folks behind me that make these rules and regulations about uh, opening up now the recreation aspect and what effect that may have on the positivity rate? Of course there's concern. I can only use sort of the history of Palm Beach County and uh, their performance under these guidelines thus far, which I've been very impressed, except for on very rare occasions. Uh, I think it's the human nature to want to stay alive and healthy. And I think that as people are living this economic uh, effect that we all have, they understand that following these rules is part of the economic health of this county. And so while I have fears that it's possible that the positivity rate uh, may go back up if we open it up on Wednesday, which we are, I don't really have any well-founded fears or concerns that it's actually going to happen. The question relates to restrictions on visitation in nursing home facilities, ALFs, skilled nursing facilities, nursing homes, uh, which I know, I, I just can't imagine the pain of not being able to, to see your loved ones um, who, who are obviously in need of, of extra care in their life at that point. Um, and, and I've heard devastating stories of people passing away without their loved ones by their side. The, the short answer is I can't give you specific statistics. Perhaps uh, Dr. Alonzo and Ms. Baker can talk about the strike teams in detail, but also understand that there's a bifurcation of authority here, and really those decisions will be made by the, by the governor himself, um, and we will obviously comply. And if we need broader or stricter restrictions here locally, the governor has empowered us to do that. Did, did you guys want to speak about the strike teams? We have several partners that have come to assist in the nursing homes. Nursing home is one of my number one priorities. I know how badly things can go in a nursing home. Um, the, the virus can spread very quickly. We have people in nursing homes who are COVID positive. Um, some have been uh, brought there after discharges from hospitals. The staff are very, very conscientious and trying to do a good job, but it's, it's difficult sometimes to do that. So uh, we have had AMR uh, help us in terms of doing surveys and asking questions. We then ourselves, as our uh, epi teams, have gone in, strike teams, to visit specific uh, nursing homes. And we also have strike teams that have come down from the National Guard and from Broward who were not deployed to work in the um, field hospitals that have come here instead and are helping us. So. They're going to all the different um, nursing homes. All of them are being um, looked at. They're helping them with testing. They're helping them with um, making sure they are doing what they say they're doing. It's easy to read the rules and say we're doing all these things, but we're actually observing and going through the nursing home and looking at them doing it. So it's very time consuming, but it's very essential that that's done and that we help them. It's not just uh, trying to cite them on things that are being done wrong, but it's to help them do the job. They're very conscientious of the patients they're trying to take care of, and we want to assist them. We have helped them in terms of uh, providing testing for them, um, and also in terms of the actual um, rules that they have to follow and how to do it uh, more efficiently and, and, and better. So that's a big priority, and it involves a lot of people that have helped us to do that. We will continue doing that. Thank you. Uh, last minute questions? Yes, ma'am. You mean from the, the question was uh, current restrictions from the governor, governor's order um, keeps restaurants and other facilities closed until 
April 30th or maybe May 1, but right around there. That's the crystal ball and I don't have the crystal ball. So I don't know what the governor is going to do. Again, I've been involved as an executive member of the, of the task force. We simply provide our recommendations. The governor will decide um, based upon health and safety and medicine as he's reiterated when he will pull back those restrictions. I just don't know the answer to that. Yes, um, you want to take that? I'm going to call Commissioner McKinley, who's a resident commissioner there, and I've leaned on her to try to um, work around this issue, but I'll let her update you on it. Yes, good afternoon. The question was about the testing site in Walmart. Uh, there were some issues with the event, the special event permit that the village of Royal Palm Beach required of Walmart to be able to open up that site. Uh, they weren't able to agree to some of the terms of that permit that was necessary, and uh, Walmart determined it was not in their best interest to try to open a site there. Uh, we have reached out to Monisha Brown, who is the Walmart spokesperson for the state of Florida, about trying to locate another testing site, particularly in the central western part of Palm Beach County, that Wellington, Royal Palm Beach area that seems to be lacking right now. Um, the village of Wellington has reached out and offered a 10-acre site near the Wellington Green Mall, and uh, it's now in Walmart's hands, and hopefully, hopefully they'll give us a testing site somewhere in Palm Beach County. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, very good. So at this time, I'd, I'd like to bring this press conference to a close. I want to say again, uh, each and every member that stands behind me, uh, every person that's dedicated um, their lives to this response, police officers, firefighters, public workers, um, health care professionals, we've seen such amazing things happen in our community and throughout our nation over this difficult time. Please, as a civic duty, let, let's honor their service. Let's honor uh, the integrity and pride in our community by making sure that we do embrace this new avenue of recreation healthy, safely, and with passion, but with concern for our neighbors and those who have the most to lose. We will update this community as we have in the past going forward. We'll look to the governor's task force to release the recommendations, and we'll look to the governor to speak about how he's going to open the re economy with the help of his local partners in the near future. Thank you for being here today.